believe that aside from being exploitative, Megan is completely delusional about what she stole from the royal family. However, it was quite sad for her that Harry wasn't as bright as she thought. And what dark future awaits the Sussexes? Join me to discuss in this video. And welcome back to the Royal News 365 channel. I don't know if you realize this, Harry looks beat down. I believe the rumors that Meghan has complete control and has access to all his communication. If you had never been in a relationship with someone like Meghan, you wouldn't get it. I do think he is brainwashed. If this was a man doing this to a woman, the world would be flipping out. They did have a chance of being tremendously successful if they hadn't come out attacking their families. Their victim and grievance narrative killed their brand immediately. They should have sold glamour, elegance, and fashion, innocuous and very profitable. If Markle was a product, some may say that Harry would be entitled to sue for misrepresentation, false and misleading advertising, breach of contract, maybe even torturous endangerment, and of course massive, massive damages. Although royal and wealthy, Harry was exceedingly unworldly, especially in terms of the commercial world. He had no idea how things worked in the real world because things always just happened for him, with a team of people around him to manage his life and to ensure that everywhere he went people smiled, cheered, and told him how wonderful he was. His personality meant, however, that he would never be satisfied with his massive lot in life because his big brother got an extra sausage for breakfast, or because his father kept a tight hold on the purse strings, or because the engagements his grandmother sent him on were not as glamorous as his brother's engagements. Along comes Markle, one of the thousands of models slash actresses slash whatevers that populate Los Angeles. Low on talent, high on chutzpah, they are adept at exploiting any contacts, shoving themselves in front of decision-makers wherever they can, doing whatever, and I mean whatever, to get an edge, get a break, get a part. Markle's grift got her a low-grade role on an obscure cable show in Toronto. Then she hit the jackpot, making a connection with Harry. To have Harry leave his family, his friends, his army buddies, his role as a working royal, his culture, both British and royal, and all of the perks such as guaranteed income and financial support for life, free lifetime accommodation in a royal residence, private holidays at vast estates like Balmoral and Sandringham, around-the-clock security, chauffeurs and cars on tap, access to anyone of significance he wished to meet, he must have believed what he was being offered by Markle was so much better than what he had, and importantly, that Markle could make it happen for him, that she could deliver. Markle no doubt promised Harry that she knew how the system worked. She was whip-smart, and with her connections street smarts, and his royal pedigree, they would set the world on fire. Except, as it turns out, she would seem to be just mediocre and ordinary. How else do you explain Harry going from the front row of Westminster Abbey in the presence of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth I and the then Prince of Wales televised around the world to a grimy movie theater in Jamaica sitting in the middle rows with ordinary people in baseball caps while the local vips at that event, who Harry would previously not have considered to be anywhere near his equal, have a special VIP room to which he and Markle are not invited. How else would you explain Harry turning up at events now looking disheveled, not particularly clean, in a crumpled suit with no tie, the same old white shirt that stopped being white several years ago, and the expression of someone who is very conflicted and deeply, deeply unhappy? Anyone looking at that scenario could deduce that Harry was sold a dud, they could well argue that she is not whip-smart, turns out she has no real connections. She is not street-smart, and that, in fact, she will never succeed 
because she is quite unliked by anyone who has extended dealings with her, and she manages to antagonize everyone she deals with commercially. They could argue that a psychologically complicated and narcissistic woman had overstated her ability, her talent, her commercial aptitude, and, importantly, her natural place in the world, and in the process, had destroyed the previous exceptionally good life of another person. I don't particularly like Harry, and I certainly disapprove of his destructive actions towards his family. Remember him sitting by as Markle mocked Her Majesty, the late Queen, with a deep, smug curtsy, and the fact that Harry did not intercede to prevent the footage from going to air, and that those actions were as public as he could make them. This made me spit out my tea. This is so our saint. This is why she kept vying for free things not realizing as a royal you can't. She then planned the exit. Didn't she say she was a civil servant in a tiara? Well, duh, that's exactly what you are as a working royal in a constitutional monarchy. I really struggle to accept that she actually has a degree in international studies from a reputable U.S. university. Wouldn't a key part of such a course involve studying systems of government in other countries? Megan could have easily found out what royal duties entailed. I think she did since she was all about modernizing the royal family from the start, which likely meant more glamour and less ribbon-cutting. Harry's dumb and easily led, a narc would have no trouble pulling him into line. Megan's not so dumb, not as whip-smart as she thinks but not dumb, and definitely not easily led. I think she thought she could convince the royal family to give her what she wanted and impressionable, Harry thought she deserved everything she wanted. They're both stupid, greedy, and delusional, but in different ways. Harry is just plain stupid and greedy in that he thought the Bank of Pa was unconditional and delusional about Meghan. Meghan was so used to getting her own way by being a nar she was stupid to expect the royal family to let her do as she wanted, is just plain greedy, but was equally delusional in that she thought she was wonderful and could do anything. Harry got sold on a delusion that reinforced his stupidity. Megan is just plain delusional about her abilities, but when given the chance, royal events, Netflix, Spotify, can't follow through. Harry was too blinded by her narkness to see that. Harry's got his problems, but pre megan he could behave well enough in society that the biggest problems with him were supposedly in private like private costume parties and hotels in vegas and charles's birthday party at clarence house he could go to garden parties or attend meetings for invictus and do other official stuff without problem he mostly took the advice and read speeches he was given which was difficult but not a huge problem after megan he was problematic at official events, not just private ones. That's sort of on him, but also on her as a narc abuser. His shitty behavior in private and private made public is all on him, but his belief that Megan would be the best ever royal to cut a ribbon on a new sewerage plant in Grimsby is on Meghan and her narc abuse, and so is his belief that her failure to be that is someone else's fault. Harry has his own faults a whole list of them. But they multiplied at least twofold when he got sucked in by a narc, and some of that is on Megan. It's always on the narc when their partner changes, even if their partner had issues to begin with. They're good at manipulation, and if that fails, they just wear you down, especially if they have manipulated friends and family on their side to argue they're right, which they always do, the dissenters are ditched with believable lies. Harry isn't innocent of wrongdoing, but he can and be the victim of a narc, and that's what I think he is, and too thick to either see it or get himself out of it. Harry sucks, though. It's not like he could do better. He's a piece of shit. Angry, disloyal, stupid. He's a prick. He got exactly what he deserved. Plus, 
Just as much as I believe that Megan googled the shit out of him, I know he had full-blown Scotland Yard intel on her, and he married her anyway. His family probably let him just because they felt like he'd pitched the biggest bitch fit ever. Of course, Will couldn't stay silent, which then caused Harry to do what? Pitch a giant bitch fit and try to undermine him and Kate. I think they'll divorce, and I'm excited to watch that, but they deserve each other. He's no prize. Plus, he's ugly. He's always been the uglier brother. There's no such thing as tortious endangerment. Chelsea and Cressida were both nice women, and they kicked him to the curb, because he is a louse, has a violent temper, and cheats on them. So the best he could do was Markle. He was never going to marry a nice woman because he was not a nice man. How he describes Chelsea in his book is sad. He never saw her intelligence or her love of her home country, but just as this free-spirited party girl. He never saw her as a person, and she outgrew him. And I don't feel guilty saying that about him because of how he's treated his whole entire family. And honestly, the way he treated John Travolta pisses me off and shows what an asshole he always was. Bro, you only have that award because of him. He's the most entitled jerk besides Andrew in the royal family. He's actually just like Andrew, except hopefully doesn't have sex with underage girls. And at least Andrew was mildly attractive in his younger years. Harry is so annoying. His hair makes me mad. Not cause it's orange, but because it's gross looking with the fuzzy baldness that's also orange. He should go bald, except he can't pull that off either. Even as a little kid, he looked like an unattractive, unpleasant little shit. You can spot those types a mile away. Heck, I babysat dozens of them as a teenager. I recall an article about Harry's behavior as a child. Apparently, he used to run his tricycle into the shins of palace workers. But I feel uncomfortable watching someone being overborne by another person. Harry is no longer in control of his destiny, I fear, and his story will end sadly unless he can man up and openly reject what he has been sold, beginning with a break with Markle and a public statement of his remorse. He didn't want the responsibilities, but he did want more. I remember reading after William and Catherine were given apt. 1A and funds to have it remodeled. Harold complained that he didn't get the perks that William did, big houses and more money, because he wasn't married. Harold knew he had to have a family before he could expect those things, and marrying Madame meant he'd get a chance to be placed more on William's level and entitled to more. In spare, or before he met the wife, I don't think he was much concerned about that kind of thing until the wife came along and started saying, why don't you get this and why don't you get that? The person who really bothered that Harry doesn't get the same level of compensation as William does is Megan. Madame fueled Harry's envy and thought she could use the race card to blackmail the British royal family into making her queen of the Commonwealth. But if Harry had not enabled her, we would never have heard about Madame Nobody. While not even remotely defending Hasbin's bad behavior, he was raised to be a gullible layabout. That's on King Charles III. I don't understand why a spare would not be groomed to take over Justin Casey, but instead they let him pretend to be military while he played Xbox and beat up women. Has should been married off long ago. At least late Queen Elizabeth, too, had the decency to put her other kids to work for the firm and not them roam about beating hookers or maiming pregnant polo ponies. Has needed responsibility. He was ripe for the picking by a schemer-like claw. She convinced Haz that he should be equal to William, and when that didn't happen, she convinced him they would be royalty in the U.S. I doubt he even realizes he was duped by her. It appears that Harry was so stupid and difficult that instead of preparing him to take over just in case, they focused on just helping him pass for normal. 
I agree it was a big mistake. Harry should have been raised to see himself as his brother's loyal subject, not his equal or rival. If you are in a hierarchical society, accepting and taking pride in your position within the hierarchy is essential. This is something both Anne and Edward have done well. Andrew accepted his secondary position more reluctantly, but he at least understood the way the hierarchy works. Harry doesn't seem to understand how things really work. Harry needed a wife who would be willing to be his minder and help him find purpose and acceptance of his very secondary role. It seemed, too, that the whole family felt bad that Harry was stupid and a bad, no need to mince words, kid. So they tried to help him in ways so that all of this was hidden. If the family was a regular one and not the royal family, they could have enrolled him in a school geared towards people who were less gifted and had behavioral issues. They could have sent him to a school geared towards students with learning and behavioral problems. They just didn't consider the possibility because such schools are relatively new, and the British royal family doesn't have a long history of understanding children's needs. What is bizarre is that Harry is still talking about it as a grievance. Then Meghan, and possibly the ghostwriter, trying to get more interesting material, encouraged and stirred up Harry's sense of grievance and his resentment towards his family. Now they sold each other a dude. He thought he was getting a glamorous film star wife who'd make his friends and family envious. Got a Z-list, talent-free, nobody instead. She thought she was getting unlimited access to the royal family jewels, castles, and money. Didn't realize she'd have to turn out at five, um, on a gray British morning to cut the ribbon on a new sewage plant in Grimsby and do so graciously. Neither Megs nor Harry seem to want to find ways to enjoy life. Neither of them has any curiosity or imagination, so the only thing that matters to them is money. Sadly, they just stay angry all the time. If either of them had any desire to help others, as you said, they might be a happier couple. I believe when Oprah called about the interview that Megan's head started swimming. You know, Oprah called her. Can you imagine? The promise of fame and fortune was just too much for Meg. But here's the thing. By all common standards, Harry was rich. He lived practically free in his bachelor digs. He didn't need much. He was away most of the time. He went to the country most weekends. He was working sometimes. The army years were fun times. He was probably collecting working royal money because he was family and doing duty. Anyway, he left the army because he failed officer advancement. He failed his pilot license. So he became a working royal, back in the family business. But what to do with him as he wasn't very happy doing the bits here and there? Invictus saved him from the ordinary royal drudgery of cutting a ribbon at 5A. M in Grimsby. I'm joking. It was perfect. He was at ease with the lads. It was an easy gig. He could travel and have lots of free time still. Then he met her. His life was well balanced between royal work here and there, and of course, Invictus. Life was grand. We saw uh, a few bits of Oh Geese Harry in the Rags, but the firm controlled a lot of it by giving the news about the other royals. She chatted with Oprah, and the escape was set. Now, having married the love of his life, who couldn't hack seventy two working days in eighteen months, she failed to realize that life as a royal although at times dull, offered up a house for cheap staff as a perk for being a working royal, lots of travel holidays, clothing allowances, full time, security to just name some of the perks. If he had had to pay for all of that from his pocket, it'd be in the millions per year. But they didn't factor that into their 72 working days. So they fucked off to Canada. Then her friend Oprah got them a loan of a house of her other bestie Tyler another story for another day during their COVID year. But that mansion wasn't suitable, so they moved into a Russian's lemon of a house near a stinking at times, 
bird sanctuary in Montecito. Didn't it all look grand, the fame and fortune coming their way when they left? The problem was that the pair of them had no plan beyond the Oprah interview, wherein the good wife lied at least seventeen times about her husband's family. The media was making her famous beyond her wildest dreams. So she kept it up. Kept dining out with Harry's family. Harry dines out on his mom. She dines out with the rest of his family, and they've written a book, done a reality series. She had a little radio program where she lied about her life as a royal a lot. Remember? The fire? How did they arrive in Jamaica in January 2024? Well, they are a pretty stupid pair is how. They obviously are easily led by the likes of Oprah, Tyler, Perry, Marcus Anderson, and even Elton Joan was in on some of the schemes to get the riches. They achieved the number one status of being the most disliked celebrity couple in the USA. And they did it in less than four years. Quite an achievement, I would say. On the other thinking, just some time, I think after he married, Sperry realized that he and his wife and kids had to walk behind the whales forever, had to bow to them, live in a cottage allocated to them, start taking allowance money from William at some point of time when he became king. Never. Be in the same income bracket as the brother, never be as senior as his brother's kids, never be anything significant. His wife and kids, likewise. He was a spoke in the wheel, a part of the machinery. He believes that he is an equal and will never bow to Kate or Camilla or William. His ego is that big. I am sure of it. This is why he decided to decamp from his royal life and let his wife lead him into a grifter lifestyle in the hope that his daddy will keep writing checks to cover his expenses while they make billions of dollars from media ventures. He realized late in life that he is another version of Uncle Andy, and I believe that this happened when William had his first child. Yes, he is dim-witted enough, coddled and pandered so that this thought had not occurred to him until then. Meghan Markle is trying to market her blackness as a useful tool for his world dominance and grifting off of him and his family connections. They both are grifters. They look for ways to strategize grifting from what little talent they possess, which is waving the mental health card, the race card, the dead mummy card, the reincarnation of the dead mother-in-law card. That is all there is to them. But he was discontent about being the only loser in his immediate family who would never sit on the throne, unlike Charles, Camilla, William, Catherine, and even little George, long before he hatched a plot to set up his co-king role of Commonwealth as a honorary black person with his Nigerian wife. On the other hand, I based my theory on some old media reports that he tried to pull rank on Kate and walk in front of her at public events because he is a blood prince and he considered her a commoner. But I think that soon she will be almost the rank of queen, non-Brit here, so don't understand all the garters and ceremonies involved. And of course, his entire family was inclusive of him so that he never felt left out that he has come to believe that he is the same as William. I can never see him bowing to the whales, walking behind them, or kneeling in front of his brother. That is why he can never go back in his mind. And do you realize? It makes the stories about the York girls treating Catherine badly because she was a commoner all the more plausible. I can see Harry and Eugenie collaborating on that, the way bullies do. One's the leader, but they always have a sidekick to bolster them up. Remember when Harry pinched Catherine's butt whilst they were on the balcony in 2011? How disgusting is that? Bad enough that he did it at all, but to do it in a highly public environment where she couldn't respond is low. I can see that if she said anything later that he'd be all. Just kidding. Just a joke. Don't be so serious, geez. You're always so mean to me. All to gaslight her about what he did, which was highly offensive and disgusting. Complete lack of respect for her. I can see him and Eugenie later yucking it up about his disrespect to Catherine. I suspect before Meghan Markle came along that Eugenie was the one winding him up. 
In fact, King Charles and Diana steered him to the military, like previous generations, hoping he would make it a career. I don't think anyone realized he did not have the abilities to progress through the ranks, and he was not going to accept remaining at a lower rank. Likely the structure and routine was good for him. I really can't blame King Charles or Diana because they likely did their best based on what they knew. Once a child reaches their teen years, they will begin making decisions on their own good and bad. I didn't know if Harry was indulged or not. If he was, he would not be complaining about sausages. And he could not remain part of the Prince and Princess of Wales team forever. I am sure they wanted him to move on to his own thing, especially after Prince George was born, and was reluctant to actually carve out his own role. He likes just showing up. I think he was resentful that William and Catherine wanted and needed to create their identity, and he was not included. And you? What do you think about Harry and Meghan? Please tell me to know below in the comments. If you see my video is so useful, don't be afraid to like and share it with anyone who also loves it anytime you want. And please subscribe to the Royal News 365 channel to get more updates in the future. Now, thank you for watching, goodbye, and see you in the next videos.